Okay, hi, this is Steve from Ultraceps T-Shirt Color Separation Software. And um, I just uh, developed a new product. It's called um, Duotone Seps by Ultraceps. It's a uh, collection of actions, uh, JavaScripts and plugins that run within Adobe Photoshop that will create a perfect Duotone. Uh, which is a separation with only two colors in addition to a underbase and a highlight white. Okay, now although Adobe Photoshop does have a standard built in function to generate duotones, um, they're not meant for screen printing, they're engineered for um, offset printing and other forms of imaging. They don't work at all for uh, t-shirt printing. So we resolved this problem by creating this piece of software that's going to create uh, one-click perfect separations, duotone separations in Photoshop. And we're going to demonstrate how to use it and how to install it. Now after downloading um, the file from our website, you'll have a folder named Duotone Seps by Ultraseps. There'll be two folders inside. One is a Macintosh version. The other is a Windows. Uh, they both run identically, so although I'm demonstrating on a Windows system here, the operation and installation is the same on Mac. So um, we're going to open up the Windows folder, and uh, there'll be a collection of files inside. This could change at some point. In the future, um, you know, I'm making this video in the very beginning. There may be some inclusions uh, within this folder. But for now, this is what you'll see. Um, you'll have an installer, a link to this, this training video, a PDF user guide, uh, the actions, and a test image or two. And the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to run the installer. Okay, The actions will not work on their own without first running the installer that installs the JavaScripts and the plugins that the program needs to use. And we're not going to go through running the installer. It's a simple process. It will only take uh, 30 seconds or so. Now, after you get done um, running the installer, the next thing you're going to need to do is to load these actions. Depending upon if you have uh, a newer version of Photoshop, you can just drag these actions into the Photoshop window and they'll load into your actions palette. Uh, if you have an older version, you'll have to uh, load them through the Actions palette. So let's do it that way. Okay. So let's make sure our Actions panel is uh, visible in Photoshop. If it's not, go to Windows and choose Actions. And then click the icon in the upper right hand corner. Scroll down and select Load Actions. Now you're going to need to navigate to the window containing the Actions file which is called Duotone Seps by Ultraseps Windows, in this case. Double-click that, and uh, it's now in your Actions panel. And if you expand it, all the functions included with the program are in the panel. You probably can't see them all, uh, all here. If I scroll up a little bit, and you can, you can see them all. Now, you could run the actions uh, like this in list mode, or you could turn it to button mode where everything just operates as a um, as a button so clicking one button will will uh, start the function all the actions in gold are text-based um, instructions and all the actions in blue actually perform a function okay okay once you're ready to run a separation you have to make sure that your file is format it correctly for use. Um, it needs to be an RGB file, as we see here, and it should just be on one layer. The layer should be called layer zero. And the most important fact is that all the parts of the image that do not include a color, okay, needs to be transparent. Where you see the checkerboard pattern around the car, this indicates transparency. There is no color there. Now, if this was filled with white, what will happen is that the program is going to see that as white ink. 
and it's going to uh, generate that white within your under base and your highlight white channels, which you definitely don't want. And that's the case if you run separations manually or not. It, it has nothing at all um, directly in correlation with this program. I mean, you know, if you have white in your design, you know, you, when you run a separation, uh, it's going to see that as white. So this is kind of how you need to have your files set up. Now, I do have uh, some checks built into this program, whereas if it's not in RGB mode, and if you had more than one layer, or there's some other issues with the file, the program will fix it, and the, uh, the separation will run without any errors. However, it's a good idea to make sure it's all set up correctly in the first place. Um, and also, one other, one other thing before we uh, go on with doing a separation, um, it's a good idea to go through the user guide, and it's also a good idea to read these two text-based actions called Priority Must Read and How to you Use Duotone Seps. If you go through these two text-based actions, which open about 20 uh, little pop-up windows with, you know, basically instructions, you'll know how to use the program. It's very simple. Okay, now once you're, our, uh, once you're at this point, you're going to want to load the color settings, okay? So we're going to click this button here. And uh, just click the prompts. And once you get to stop, the color settings are loaded. So if you go to edit and you scroll down to color settings, you'll see that the color settings are loaded called UltraSep Custom Color. It says quick steps and all these uh, working spaces, which is normal. And this is the same settings file used for uh, UltraSeps and quick step software. So if you're using one of my color separation software products, uh, you don't even have to bother uh, doing this, okay? And now to run a separation. Now, none of these other actions here, okay, uh, convert duo to duotone gray, green, burgundy, blue, orange, purple, sepia, these cannot be run yet. Okay. Neither can any of the actions to lighten or intensify the channels. All right. Neither can this action here to uh, help a separation that contains a lot of solid reds, nor can a discharge underbase action be run yet. None of these will work unless the initial separation is complete. And we'll do that now by clicking Duotone Seps Run. And it only takes a few seconds or so for the duotone separation to complete. And we'll zoom back out. And your initial separation is going to be a, a background shirt color of dark gray, a white under base, a color we call duotone color change me. That's the lighter color, a highlight white, and the final color will say black ink or darker contrast color. Okay, now it's important not to change any of these color names nor delete them until you're happy with the final result of the separation because all of these actions, okay, which help modify the files as far as lightening and darkening the channels or changing the color of the duotone and generating the discharge underbase all rely on these five channels being there with the uh, names provided by the software, okay? It also requires that the RGB channels to be intact. Do not delete these RGB channels. Okay, now let's take a look at each of the individual um, channels here, okay? We have a uh, white under base, and we have the lighter of the two duotone colors. And we have a white highlight, and we have the contrast of the duotone. And um, you could take a look at the density of each channel and decide if you want to either lighten or intensify uh, the channels uh, using these actions. Or, you know, if, depending upon your expertise, you know, you could use uh, the curves or levels functions in Photoshop to make uh, you know, the channel darker or lighter. All right, and obviously you can also change the color of the duotone channels. Now this can be done manually. 
uh, but we also included um, seven actions which will instantaneously change the color of the duotones and give you a um, an estimated PMS value for each although it's not going to include that PMS value to the name of the channel because as we said these channel names can't be changed until uh, the separation is complete so let's click uh, let's click duotone gray and uh, as you can see here that immediately changed the uh, contrast and the duo the lighter duotone uh, colors to uh, cool gray 4 and cool gray 11 now I'll try green and only takes a second to change it to a light green and forest green for the duotone and the same thing with burgundy and the same thing with duotone blue now this is basically the def the uh, default separation uh, but the uh, the black ink has been changed to uh, a navy blue with 2745 PMS navy as opposed to black and this is more of a traditional uh, duotone effect and we also included orange and we could change the duotone to purple or we could change the duotone to uh, sepia which is kind of like an old uh, photo and uh, if you use a sepia maybe you could use a, uh, a texture to kind of make it look a little bit aged or weathered um, or or whatever and um, let's go back to blue and um, for those that aren't sure how to do this let me show you how you can change the colors of your channels manually uh, let me move the channels panel a little bit into the center here and if you want to change the channel manually what you want to do is double click to the right of the channel name don't double click the channel name itself because if you do that's just going to highlight the channel name and you, for renaming what the channel is called what you want to do is double click to the right of it and that's going to bring up the spot channel options okay and from here you want to click the little color chip and the color picker window will come up and within this window here you could change the value of the channel and um, you could also click color libraries after you let's say after you're satisfied with the uh, change that you've made and you can get a good idea of what PMS color um, is going to match now these aren't super accurate I, I found over the years that these PMS uh, values in, in uh, Photoshop tend to be on the duller side. Uh, and I very rarely will use absolute PMS values in my separations or in my software. I will uh, pick a color that's close to the PMS value that I want using the color picker window, uh, which kind of creates a more pure uh, color as opposed to using... Uh, PMS values in the uh, color library. So that's how you would change the color manually if you like, okay? Now let's move our channels panel uh, back out of the way and um, let's go over the discharge under base action. And um, what this is going to do is this is going to generate a discharge under base using a combination of data from the white uh, underbase channel that uh, the program has generated and in addition to channel calculations using the RGB channel. Now let's click uh, generate discharge underbase and let it go through its technique and it'll only take a second or two and you'll have a perfect discharge um, underbase which the program is going to name uh, discharge ink white underbase. Now if you compare that to your standard white underbase, you can see that it's removed all ink uh, that would be underneath the top colors because with discharge printing, you only want to have white ink where you actually see white in the design itself. So running this action uh, will give you a perfect discharge underbase and uh, I would say the only thing that could possibly be needed is either to uh, intensify or to lighten it. 
and um, usually the best way to uh, modify the discharge base is to go up to image adjust either levels or curves and uh, you know you can make it a little darker or a little lighter or whatever the case may be okay we'll cancel that out for now uh, but that's pretty self-explanatory and then you would just simply move that discharge underbase up to where you want it uh, within the design and delete your white underbase. Okay, and for now we're going to delete that and um, turn off our RGBs and uh, we're back to our, um, our blue um, duotone separation. And we'll take a look at each one of those channels again. There's the white underbase, there's your duotone, there's the highlight, and there is your contrast color. Now, as far as the actions to uh, either intensify or lighten the, uh, the channels, how they work is they use a calculation to um, apply the, uh, the image to itself by a factor of 10% uh, with um, the intensify actions and they uh, apply a calculation where it uses a screen blending mode of 10% and it basically reduces the opacity of the, um, of the channel from itself. I'll give you an example here. Let's just click intensify white under base channel. And we can keep clicking this, you know, several times until you get the density that you want, okay? And if you need to undo multiple levels, you, you could just go to your history panel and you could bring that, you know, back in time, okay? And the same thing with uh, the lighten is going to lighten it just that little bit at a time. And it's going to lighten it and darken it evenly across the board. Uh, that's why I like this particular technique for, uh, you know, uh, globally lightening and darkening uh, channels because it doesn't pick and choose. It's not going to make those 10% dots darker than your 60% dots. It's going to make it very, very, very easy across the board. Okay, now we'll turn our channels back on. And that's about it. That's, uh, that's how the Duotone SEPs run. Now there's one other uh, thing that we need to cover. And that is if you're doing a duotone separation that contains a lot of uh, large solid block red lettering, okay? Um, and we've included a separate action to help add contrast uh, to a file such as that. And let's, let's do one of those now and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, I closed the image of the 56 uh, Chevy that was uh, given to us by an artist by the name of Lemoris, who does some really nice car artwork. Um, when you get the time, check him out at lemoris.com. And uh, now let's open up an image that could give us a problem. Um, now, the piece of artwork here is not of the best quality, but it's of the type that we want to discuss. And that is artwork that contains solid red text, especially if that red's a little bit washed out. Now, with artwork such as this, this red text is not going to be dark enough uh, within the dark contrast channel. And I'll give you an example of... Uh, exactly what I'm talking about and we'll run the duotone seps run action and a few seconds later this will be done now I'll zoom back out and you can see here that our red text is bar barely visible it's it's almost like a light blue so what that indicates is that there is not enough of this dark red color in the dark contrast channel so if we click on the dark contrast you see that there's not much there okay it's basically all within your uh, your duotone your lighter color channel now there's two ways to fix this okay 
The first way is to change the color of the text prior to running the separation. So let's say change that uh, red text to black or to dark blue or something like that. If that's impossible, we have a fix for it within the actions panel here. And we have an action called add solid red contrast run. And this can be run multiple times to add um, density back to areas of solid red where uh, you may where it may be needed again. So let's click this. All right, and as you can see, the red is starting to come back. Let's run it again. And let's run it one more time. And now, if we look at the contrast channel, we have you know a sufficient amount of contrast here, so the file will print effectively. Now, if you need to make any sort of change, or if you're not happy with uh, you know the adjustment you made, or maybe you took it too far, you can go to your history panel, and uh, you can click the snapshots here, because each time this action is run, it's going to, we, we automatically create a snapshot of your image. So you're able to click and go back in time, all right, to where your uh, image was when you ran the, uh, the action previously, okay? So there's always a, there's always a way to, uh, to get back to at least where you started. And uh, that's about it. That's how um, Duotep, du uh, Duotone Seps by Ultraseps uh, runs. It's a very simple program to use. Uh, it's pretty much one click. About the only adjustment you're going to need uh, is possibly intensifying or lightening, you know, a channel or two. Um, it's a great option to offer your customers for a different look. I think it's good for pre-print lines, especially because you have a very limited palette you're working with. You're only working with four colors here. Uh, you know, two whites and your lighter and your darker uh, duotone colors. So, even when we change it to a different color by using the actions here, we're not actually making any physical changes to the channels. The channels remain the same. So, Theoretically, you could set up a job on press and let's say run 50 pieces with a light and a dark blue. And then you could swap that dark blue out and you could run grayscale. You could run a, a light gray and a dark charcoal gray. You could take that out and you could put in like a pink and a burgundy. So, you know, you could take one design and have multiple looks, which I think is an excellent option for, uh, for preprint lines. And there's one other thing I'd like to add is um, I've decided not to offer a trial version to this because it's a very simple, inexpensive uh, program, and you know it is what it is. You know it does it does the job, and I really didn't want to get involved in all the locking and unlocking email and correspondence, you know, and and so on. So, um, but I think that uh, you know the video itself w should be enough. Uh, to uh, give everyone an idea exactly how to use it and uh, what to expect. So, hey, thanks again. And um, if you uh, like to get a copy, uh, you could check it out today at ultraseps.com. As I said, it's a very inexpensive piece of software that I think you'll get a tremendous amount of use out of. Thanks a lot.